Good afternoon, welcome back. Uh, today I'm just going to show you just uh, little bits about everyday running of the birds, types of seed we use, and uh, our weekly um, also of obviously things with water, uh, like Abbey Gold and things throughout the year what we would be using. What we'll start off is with the seed. Now, obviously I've got a mix of different British birds, um, from anything from yellow hammers, chaffinches, green finches. But an all round mix would be something just like a British finch mix that would work totally fine. But obviously I sell seed so I've got the luxury of giving the bullfinches, the bullfinch mix, green finches, green finch mix and so on and so on. But I will just show you some of the seeds that we do uh, for obviously the green finches and what, what type of seeds and what seeds are in it. So we'll start off with the greeny mix. There's one here, um, I mean it's a really good mix. I will uh, put a picture of that up to make it a bit more clearer for you to see what, what is actually in it. Um, you've got sunflowers, buckwheat, hemp, um, groats, oats, plain canary, red millet, that, that type of stuff. Um, it's quite a fact if you've got them in cages, uh, but I'll go on to show you later on one of the previous green pieces that I've shown you before uh, that we've had in the cage for two weeks. So that's what we do um, if we're getting them ready for a show, for instance. Now, in the two weeks I've had in, you'll see a, a really big difference in that bird, but obviously it's getting a bit a bit too flat now, so it will be going back in a flight shortly. Um, so I don't want to see how it turned out like, and obviously it's turned out quite a nice bird. Uh, but in flights, you can give them that, and it, it's perfect. It'll, uh, it'll do the job exactly what you need. It's made for a green finch, so it does exactly what it says, really. Now, with the, the canaries, um, a basic canary mix. Uh, this is a premium canary. Uh, with yellow biscuit, it's a mix of linseed, plain canary, uh, you've got red millet in there, um, black rape seed, yellow biscuit obviously, but again, I'll just give that to canaries. I mean, even with such as bullfinches, it's quite a low diet, uh, bullfinches, you don't know how to feed them because they will eat everything, but I do give that to bullfinches from time to time, but obviously bullfinch meats I will give them anyway, just because I've got it. Goldfinches, uh, siskins, red poles, I mean we've got our own red pole mix anyway, but the, this goldfinch mix we have, it's made for goldfinches, siskins, the smaller birds, it's got more finer seeds in, uh, Uniger, plain canary, uh, grass seeds, red millet, Niger, all, all the stuff that's in here um, is for these smaller type of birds that, that if they're on the greenfinch mix they're just going to get way too fat, so... I'll take a picture of all three so you can actually see them closer up anyway. Obviously, soaking seed, uh, through breeding season, um, you want to germinate your seed. But there's a, a difference between soaking seed and germinating seed. You can actually soak any seed that there is um, to make it soft shells for the young ones, because obviously young British, when they are young, the, the beaks are not that strong yet. So making a seed softer for them to, to eat obviously that's what you need to do but then you've got obviously germinating seed now this is the germination seed in obviously in the seed form i'm not going to touch it i'm actually allergic to seed but mung beans in there red white diary um it's obviously grass seed a little bit of niger um what else is there in there uh, black rape seed and red millet and that does sprout really good. And obviously, if you don't know how to sprout it, I'll, I'll show you shortly. Really simple. Uh, just, just basically add water to this, which I'll show you now. Give it a stir around just to make sure you want the seeds to sink. And in breeding season, we actually do so um, green finch mix same type of way to let it chip or uh, just break the shells and that's, that's in my opinion when it's at its best as soon as it starts to break the shells as I'll show you a picture of one that I did a couple of days ago um, but I'll leave this now I'll leave it in the shed 24 hours rinse it off thoroughly sieve it through thoroughly clean everything off the seed and then I take it in this time here I'll take it inside it's obviously germination seed best 
temperatures for it to germinate is anything above 13 degrees. Outside this morning it was minus one, zero degrees. It's no good, it won't germinate, it'll take days to do it. Take it in the house, within 24 hours of that it'll start uh, chitting, breaking up the shells, which I'll, I'll, think, I'll show you a picture of that. This is just breaking the shells now. This is when I was given, that's when it's, it's, it's best. More nutrients, everything in there. Like I said the mung beans, they sprout faster than any other seed that's in there. Uh, but I'll, I'll show you that later on. Now, as a tree, what I do, obviously, apple and blue moor. Um, blue moor is obviously poppy seed. Just dip the blue moor in, add the apple in the blue moor. And blue, it's not cheap, so don't be wasting it. And just give it like that to the birds. Um, they'll, especially the bullfinches, they'll pick off that all day long, and it's blue more is the benefits of it is is outstanding for a lot of um, digestion things and things like that. So, I mean, I would usually give that in a, a salad tray, but they can eat away at that. Now, such as uh, water, obviously, now I'm trying to get them into um, a state um, thinking about breeding two or three months down the line. So, all the canaries this morning have had Avigold in, in the water. Avigold Advance. It's brilliant, it's, it's a, a, like a tonic, it gives them all the, um, the benefits they need to bring them into a condition. This is all in one liquid, um, one. Is it, 10 mil per litre, um, but it's brilliant stuff. I mean, years ago, I would never give them so much things as what I do now. I used to think that the birds would get anything they need from the seed and stuff, but it's, it's not the case. The, the things that are made on the market for the birds, obviously, do benefit. There's a lot of research going through this type of stuff. So, obviously, it's better for the birds. So, that's gone in this morning. I'll give them probably twice a month. You don't need to overfeed them, stuff like that. It just helps with stress. I mean, it's, it's cold outside, so they need every little bit of help they can get. So far as the British birds, I've put them on trickle back to four in one. Now this is, is good for T. rich virus, um, coccidosis. I've put on a preventative level, which is um, one gram per litre of water as a preventative. I mean, a cure is obviously double that. If you, if you see a bird going sick, um, you want to obviously double dose it. But as a preventative, trickle back to a brilliant, brilliant product. And i would give all that my British ones this morning. It just helps clean them out. It's, it's a good, really good substance, that. So that, that's your seed uh, water. Obviously, um, there's been a, a few things on Facebook, people saying about, do you feed birds great cuttlefish? Now, I do. I, I give them great all year round, no matter what. It obviously helps with the digestion of the seeds and stuff, so... Every, every single bird I will have grit, even in the flights, which I'll, I'm going to do a, a shot down the actual uh, shed so you can actually see the flights in situ where they are. And uh, there will be a couple of short videos of some birds in the flights. But obviously, if you any questions about anything, just send me a message on here or on our Facebook group. Um, one thing that always asked me is the different types of egg food, um, obviously we supply and what I use personally. Now, I actually tried quite a, a few mixes, whether it be Versalaga, Deli Nature, EMP um, by Donald Cook. They all sort of do the same thing, obviously when you find the one that fits for you, then just stick to it. I mean, there's so many out there, they're, they're all around the average price anyway, so there's not much difference in them. But obviously stick to what you like. This is one um, I've got. Um, First Lager Classic. And yeah, smells lovely. Um, quite coarse. Um, we do do obviously moist and dry egg foods. Um, and I will give them this time of year, just probably once a week. Um, if they're in cages, of the birds that's in cages, they just get a finger draw full. But obviously the birds in the flight, so get an egg cup full, so it's that equivalent to the type of birds that are there. But yeah, I mean egg food, same again. It's, I don't add everything to it like some people do, but that, that's for them. You know, that's that's their personal preference of what they want to use. 
Um, when you find something that works for you, stick to it. And don't change it every year. If you find some, one year you've bred a shed full of birds, it must be something down to what you're doing, not obviously the, uh, the weather outside or this or that. It's down to what you're doing in the shed, what you're feeding them, uh, your green food and stuff. So stick to it. Now that does bring me on to, to green food. Um, this time of year winter, I don't feed them any green food whatsoever. I just don't think they need it. Um, if you look in the wild, the wild birds, there's green food abundance. Now if you look in summer, there isn't, like chickweed everywhere, there isn't. Because obviously the birds are eating it to feed the young. I just don't think they need it this time of year. They get everything they need from the hard seed and the salt seed this time of year, bringing them on. So, but that's, that's my opinion. It's up to everyone else what they want to do. So, that's the seed and water. Um, now, one thing I just want to show you quickly is these, um, I, I have shown you these before. These are um, the grass type natural nests. Now, I've had a few questions uh, on Facebook saying how do we use them. Now, for me, I'm, I like things to look quite natural, especially in the flight. So, what I do with these, obviously you can use them as nesting lids, because that's what they are. But I had more success last year, actually doing what I'm going to show you. Now, I don't, this is Christmas tree, this is some I had over from when I gave the crossbills, but I do it with conifer. I would simply get it and put it in a fork, like it would be naturally in a tree. And I'd tie that back in, and that be only the flies then. Bullfinches really took to this style, but using the coconut ones. Green finches took to the, obviously the grassing leaves. And that just looks 100% natural, as you'd find them in the wild. In a fork, in a tree, that would just be tie wrapped in. And that's exactly how I use them. I don't use them as a nesting lay. I mean, we sell the nest pans for them. But that's how I use them in my flights. Obviously, they've got perfect perching points to feed the young when they're in there, flying onto there. So that's how I do them. Now, it's up to you how you want to use them, but that's personally how I would do them. Like I said, same, same type of procedure with the coconut ones into a fork. I mean, these do have hooks on anyway, but into a fork, the bullfinches would love it like that. They've got plenty of open space there, perching points, but like I said, these do have hooks on them, just so they can actually be actually placed on the wires or on the front, as I've previously shown you. So, it's up to you, but that's how I do it. And I have been asked, obviously on the, the inlay ones, how I use them. It's same for the size of the ones. Same type of thing, tie wrapped in, in if it's in the cage or in a fly. You just present yourself more naturally. So what I'm going to show you now is just a, a view of the shed looking down uh, through the flights. Um, you'll probably see some of the, the, the birds which I'm going to explain shortly. But that'll, um, that'll give you another view of obviously my shed as it is. As you can see we've got 10 flights here, um, various sizes actually, widths of them. Um, obviously for different, different birds. I mean, you don't need as much space as what I've left in here, but I just wanted to build a flight for you so I actually can keep around the birds better and control the elements. Whether it be light, obviously, we, you know, with the uh, sunlight hours that we have, I can actually have the lights on a dimmer so I can keep an eye on a bit better. But yeah, that's, uh, that's the length of it, obviously down, right down to the very end. Various birds in uh, in each flight, which I'm gonna take some shots for you just to show you some. We've got brambles, yellow hammers, chaffinches, green finches, lutino green finches, starlings, what um, this year's starlings. But yeah, I mean, we will be cutting back on some. Um, me and Mark was hoping to get together to run through some of the birds, what um, he wants to breed down there and vice versa, but unfortunately we're on lockdown again, so that's not going to happen. Um, one thing I will say, Mark is uh, doing some recording, will be sending them to me, so hopefully I can get them loaded as soon as I get them put together, so you can actually see some of these birds that he's got down there, 
just a, a, a different view of his birds and how he does it. So, something to look forward to. Just a quick look in this one. Um, you've probably seen on Oliver Crawford's video, this is um, in the front view there, just moved to the back, is a Costal Seri. Uh, it's an M bird, uh, I've had her for a few years. She's not doing any harm, she's just in a mixed flight. Also in there is some Siskins, current year bred ones, and a couple of uh, current year bred Lutino cops, which I've got eye out to pair back to normals to improve the size. Now up here is two of the young starlings uh, that I've bred this year. Lovely birds, pain on the backside, mimicking my phone calling every time I come in. As you can see, what I've done with the back there is clad it with UPVC. You'll see more like in the future anyway. These are two current year bred Greenfinch cocks I've previously shown you. Now you can see their transformation in the last two weeks. Um, I mean, if you look back on a previous video, these are the ones that I took out of the flight and they've changed dramatically. Now, the bottom one is getting a bit fatter, like I said, so that will be going back in the flights, but two fantastic birds that, if the shows would have been on, I'm sure that these would have been in it. Now, these two are new additions to the shed, actually. A brilliant pair of uh, British ball features. The, the M bird alone is, is a cracking colour, let alone the cock bird, but... As soon as I see these, I have to have them. Uh, they are, in my opinion, what these should be like. Um, the colour-wise on these is really outstanding. I hope you've got a, um, a quick idea of the green finches. Um, obviously, like I said, they do develop. Now, a story that was told to me a few years ago, which I, I genuinely believe anyway, is Don Fulci. Now, he was great with green finches. Um, he, he bred some of the some of the best in my opinion and it was a shame when he packed up with them. Now he had a green finch hen that um, didn't look much on paper if you, if you ever see it you know apparently he tried to give it away a few times and people went to buy birds and they see that one they said they don't want that you know it's not as good as what it wants to be but when it came to it um, it bred him one of the best birds he'd ever had and that just proves the point don't believe every time you see a bird you think that is you know obviously if, if they are good they are good but don't leave the other ones that might not look that good at that time because they change overnight if they've got potential you see potential in the, if they've got the colour the shape but you think oh they're not they've got not enough on them they will develop it, it goes across the line with with five canaries uh, with Norwich at first it might not look much especially when they're younger but they do change, so just bear that in mind when buying birds. Um, there is, the birds change, um, whether it be a mule or hybrid, when they've been colour fed. I know Stacey Turner is fantastic colour feeding birds. As people have said, that bird looks a different bird. It's down to the owner um, that can make a bird win a show if they want to obviously do it for that. Uh, but it is. Don't take one look at a bird and think, no, that's not for me, until you actually look deeper into it of, of knowing what type of bird they are so anyway that's it for today um but honestly thanks very much for everyone that's watched and subscribed um over a thousand views on the first video which is just over a week ago um obviously if you're liking what you see please subscribe if you've got any suggestions of what um content you want to see uh, just give me a shout um i'm new to obviously filming and stuff but experience with birds and stuff whether it be with the products i'll see got hell of a lot of experience over 30 years i've been having birds so um we'll be obviously coming into breeding season you'd see more along the lines of breeding and breeding preparation uh, but if there's anything now you want to see um just let me know and if there is anything along the lines of the the bird products that we do sell or if you just want to check out what we do sell um the link will be in the description um, just, just head over to our Facebook page and have a look. Anyway, thanks again and stay safe. Uh, if you've got plenty of time to spend with your birds, we've been on lockdown now anyway. So, main thing is stay safe and just enjoy your birds. Thanks, have a good evening.